Just how cold is the heart of Suella Braverman, the Home Secretary of this country? Well, it turns out that we've had quite a useful test of just how lacking in basic humanity this person is. Now, I do think it's obviously very important, crucial, in fact, to understand the depravity and cruelty of right-wing politics, particularly in countries like our own in which it governs. Now, a video has emerged of a Holocaust survivor who challenged the Home Secretary. Now, let's just hear what she has to say. I am a child survivor of the Holocaust. In 1943, I was forced to flee my birthplace in Belgium, and to cross war-torn Europe and dangerous seas until I finally was able to come to the UK in 1947. Now, when I hear you using words against refugees like swarms and an invasion, I am reminded of the language used to dehumanize and justify the murder of my family and millions of others. Why do you find the need to use that kind of language? I won't apologize for the language that I use to demonstrate the scale of the problem. But we mustn't shy away from saying there is a problem. I will not uh, shy away from saying we have a problem with exploiting that generosity, breaking our rules and undermining our system. What do you even say? What do you even say? Look, important caveat, let's be fair. Let's be fair to Swella Braverman. Apply fairness to her, which I'm, I'm afraid to say she doesn't apply to anybody else. I don't know about the editing of this. I haven't seen the full response of Braverman to what this Holocaust survivor said in full. What we can hear, with our own ears, is ice cold, devoid of basic humanity. Now, obviously, no one serious is accusing the Tories of anything like what happened in the Third Reich the Holocaust, the mass industrialised slaughter of the Jewish people, as well as, of course, the mass murder of many others judged to be undesirable by Nazi ideology. The point that is, that wasn't the point the Holocaust survivor, of course, has made. The point that is being made is the sorts of language that the Conservatives use to demonise migrants and refugees does not automatically lead to that sort of horror, but it is a precondition. And the point about history, particularly horror, in history is you are supposed to learn the lessons and you are supposed to learn that when you dehumanize vulnerable populations then you risk legitimizing unspeakable horror and paving the way for horror now all atrocities this is the point it's a precondition i think that's the point so it's not it doesn't automatically this kind of dehumanizing language it doesn't automatically lead to unspeakable horror but it is a precondition now the sort of language the stories use about migrants and refugees is obviously despicable so when a braverman talks about an invasion on our southern coast uh, you know as though that what we're talking about there isn't desperate vulnerable people but an army i mean that's it's supposed to conjure up the idea of soldiers so you know because there's a history you can think of the norman invasion or the attempted nazi invasion of, the, of britain it's supposed to be an invasion and you have to defend yourself you encourage people to think when you think about an invasion that you have the right to defend your territory and your soil from these marauding invaders now all atrocities in history not just genocide are only made possible because of dehumanization that's an important point because i think it sometimes comforts us to believe that these sorts of horrors in past and present are committed by sociopaths committed by basically people who there's something wrong with them we pathologize often using i have to say mental health stigma as though struggling with mental health makes you somehow prone to depravity and cruelty and all the rest of it which isn't true now we think to ourselves that no normal functioning human being with all the emotions that we have hardwired into us with our with, with any basic sense of humanity the most basic humanity could ever commit the sorts of horrors that we've seen throughout history including of course those horrors that this holocaust survivor so movingly discusses but the disturbing truth is that actually many of these crimes were committed by people like your neighbors like your colleagues like your friends and i'll challenge people watching and listening to this we all like to think that we'd be the one who didn't follow orders but if you look at what happened in Nazi Germany, for example, well, there was mass compliance 
an acquiescence. People knew what was happening and they often just went along with it and they certainly didn't speak out. Fear of consequences, fear of retribution, or maybe they just had other priorities. And I think that is something which is always worth thinking about because, you know, the the tipping point between humanity and utter depravity it's closer than you often or i think than we'd like to imagine now many of those if we think of those nazi soldiers who committed some of the most obscene horrors known to humanity particularly on the eastern front back at home they may have helped old ladies across the road fallen in love wept at their own bereavements and suffering cried maybe when reading a sad book now interwar germany itself was one of the most advanced nations on earth Weimar Germany, full of cultural blossoming. The Nazis hated all of that, of course. It had the most integrated Jewish population in Europe, and look what happened. And of course, the precondition was dehumanisation. It's not being sociopathic that explains the horrors that humanity is capable of. It's dehumanisation. As soon as an entire group of people are no longer human, then anything can be justified against them. Now, what, that's, I think, the lesson you learn from a horror like the Holocaust. The danger is that you go, well, this is so obscene and unspeakably horrific that it could never happen again because it's so unique in its in its horror. And what was specifically unique about the Holocaust was the industrialised, bureaucratic means to eradicate the Jewish people. Two-thirds of Jews were killed um, in the Holocaust in a very short space of time. It's not the only genocide committed in history also lots of horrors committed by colonial powers including britain tens of millions of indians died avoidable deaths in famines uh, read late victorian holocaust by the late um, mike davis for example uh german in colonialism it wasn't as expansionist as um its european counterparts but they committed genocides in africa uh, which aren't discussed mass horrors committed the Bel- the belgian king in the congo 10 million people may have been murdered half the population or died as a consequence of his tyranny in the 19th century not often spoken about the point is throughout history you've got examples i mean colonialism is based on dehumanization they they got these pseudo scientists to try and prove that black people were inferior in order to justify their subjugation because if they were seen as like us the white europeans then it would have been difficult to sustain consent for colonialism you had to dehumanize them and the roots of course of modern racism racism in our society you can't understand that without going back to slavery and colonialism slavery was only ended in the united states two lifetimes ago it's not that long in the grand scheme of history and again you know that kind of dehumanization is i'm I'm afraid still very much in our culture in britain what we're specifically talking about is the dehumanization particularly of migrants and refugees and it's not just the talk like the conservative politicians it's our, it's our media and i'll just give one egregious example the sun newspaper at the time, it was the biggest newspaper in the country. The moment, well, they kind of compete with the mails, <laughs> Daily Mail. It's not, it's not great, is it? Katie Hopkins was a columnist. She she compared migrants to cockroaches. This is what she wrote: headlined rescue boats. I'd use gunships to stop migrants. She said, "What we need are gunships sending these boats back to their own country. You want to make a better life for yourself, then you better get creative in Northern Africa." No, I don't care. Show me pictures of coffins. Show me bodies floating in water. Play violins and show me skinny people looking sad. I still don't care because in the next minute you'll show me pictures of aggressive young men at Calais spreading like norovirus on a cruise ship. These two populations are the same. Uh, and it goes on, I mean, it's just disgusting, kind of far-right, Nazi-like rhetoric. You, that, it's not an exaggeration to say that kind of rhetoric you'd expect to read in Der Sturmer, or a Nazi rag, or a Nazi politician speech. Um, and it was published in a mainstream newspaper. I mean, people go, oh, the sun's a rag. It's read by huge numbers of people, less than it used to be by substantial number, so small mercies. But nonetheless, now, you know, you could say that the Sun newspaper itself, um, and, you know, again, front page wants one in five Brit Muslim sympathy for jihadis, trying to portray Muslim communities as full of sympathy for ISIS. They had to print a correction several months later. The damage is done. Front pages like migrants take all new jobs in Britain, the Express, or, for example, Britain's 40% surge in ethnic numbers. The rampant Islamophobia in the British media. There was one study that showed that 59 percent of newspaper articles against muslims had negative themes in the mail on sunday it was 78 percent the point is there is a mass dehumanization of migrants and refugees in britain we know where dehumanization can lead not automatically but the precondition for what what it is and we do have in this country migrants refugees muslims attacked on the streets we had people completely erased we had this attack 
on a mi- on a on a um, migrant processing center not that long ago. That kind of rhetoric radicalizes people because they feel that the dehumanization of migrants and refugees and Muslims, for example, is legitimate. And the more that is fueled by politicians, the more there are consequences. And while it doesn't automatically lead to horror, it, it can do. And all of the sorts of horrors we've seen throughout history, like the Holocaust being, of course, the most striking example, but many others, the precondition was dehumanisation. And that is what the right are guilty of in this country and other countries. And that's why the Holocaust, that Holocaust survivor was so right to courageously shame Suella Braverman, who unfortunately is incapable of shame. Thanks for listening or watching. Please like, subscribe. I'll see you next time.